Okay, I get asked all the time the best way to do a roast on the barbecue, and it really is that simple. Um, here we've got a beautiful barbecue here. It's the Turbo 5. It's nice and hot. Now, what we're going to cook today is a rib of veal. Now, veal's not much different to beef. It's just a little younger. If you have a look at it, it's quite pale. Veal is generally a year or younger, okay? Under a year. It's best when it's milk fed, but these days they're allowed to add a little bit of, little bit of grass. No, it's really simple. The preparation of this is probably key, and I'm going to show you a few tricks. We've got our rib of, be uh, rib of veal that the, the butcher has kindly French trimmed for us, which means he's cleaned up the bones of any fat or sinew. I've got some soft butter, and I'm going to just push that across the top of the veal, like so. That, so that's about 75 to 100 grams of butter. Um, what that's going to do is, as it melts, it's going to baste the veal. Then I've got some, some hard herbs. By hard, I mean sort of thyme, rosemary and sage. So they're sort of tough leaves uh, as opposed to parsley, coriander, which are soft herbs. Okay, so we sprinkle our hard herbs across our butter, like so. They're going to sort of stick to the, uh, the butter. And what's, a, what's great about this is the oils, the essential oils in the herbs, are going to blend with the fat in the butter and seep through and baste the uh, veal as it cooks. So you get all those wonderful flavours through it. And finally, we have our thyme across the top. Then we take a little bit of salt across the top like so. A little bit of pepper. Grind, grind, grind. Now we need to secure all of these wonderful herbs and butter to the veal while it cooks. We've got some streaky bacon. So again, a little bit more flavour, a little bit more fat for basting uh, from the, uh, the fat of the streaky bacon. And we just lay them between the bones like so, okay? Until we get to the end and you have the whole veal loin or rib rack covered. Then what we do is we take little bits of butcher's twine this is the bit I like, the, the kitchen bondage. And uh, basically, individually, slide them underneath that piece of veal and tie the bacon and the herb and everything together. And what this also does, it's not only about securing the bacon and the herbs to the veal, what it does is it gives you an equal shape, an equal size the whole way through. And we've got one we prepared earlier. And you can see it's a uniform thickness, which means it's going to cook all at the same time. Now, we'll just swap these over. You don't want to watch me tie up my meat. Okay. Now, we've got our roasting tray. This is a Barbie Chef roasting tray and rack. Beautiful together. In the bottom of this, we're going to put... Oh, lost one. We're going to put our onions and they'll go to each side. Now, the onions are actually going to become part of the garnish to this dish, okay? Not only, they're going to be kind of the vegetable, not only that, they're going to add their wonderful flavour to the gravy. Um, so at the bottom of our roasting tray with our onions, we put some water. Now you want about an inch, inch and a half of water at the bottom. There's two reasons for this and we'll come to that in a second. Okay, then what we do is we lower a lovely rack of veal onto our rack, like so. And we're ready to go to the barbecue. Let's have a look at this beautiful Turbo 5. Okay, we've had it on high heat. Now, when we roast in a barbecue, we're not looking for direct heat, we're looking for indirect heat. So, we're creating this convection, this oven effect. So, I've, I've had all the barbecue burners on to get it hot. What we do is we take our rack of veal, we place it right in the centre over the gas burner that is off, okay? So there's no direct heat coming up from below. The water, as it cooks, is going to steam. It's going to be, create humidity within the barbecue, which keeps our, our meat moist. And also, as the meat cooks, all that wonderful juice drips out, the butter, the flavour from the herbs and the bacon, drip into the onion and the water and becomes our flavour base for our gravy. So you get fantastic gravy and a fantastic moist piece of meat. What we have to do during the process is make sure we don't run out of water, so keep topping it up. 
Now, just to show you how fantastic these uh, little probes are, we're going to stick that in. Okay. We turn it on. So our little red light's flashing. We select veal, cook medium rare, put it down, and pull down our lid. Okay. At this point of time, we want the barbecue to be hot. We need it to be about 250 degrees for about 10 minutes. So we seal in all those wonderful flavors. Once it's had 10 minutes, we turn it down to low, everything on low, okay? Now, if you want to adjust the heat while you're roasting, it's too hot, how do you do that? You simply lift the lid, let out some of the heat, close it down again, and you've got instant heat control. And also, up and down with your gas. So let's walk away, I'm gonna take my remote, 30 meters of range, which means that I can get from here to in front of my TV to watch the rugby, and not have to worry about my barbecue. Okay, here we go. The thing is saying perfect, 72 degrees. Veal is medium. Okay, let's turn this little baby off. Oh, okay. Oh. Let's take the off thermometer out. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So what we need to do now is just let our roasted veal relax. When you cook meat, it's important that you let it rest or relax for at least half the amount of time that you've cooked it for. So this has been resting, I mean cooking for about 55 minutes. So really, maximum you want to let it rest for about 25 minutes, minimum probably 15. You can leave it covered with a little bit of foil. Okay, but just for the sake of argument, we're going to pretend that it's rested for that amount of time. Now, I'll oh, 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 transfer that to our board. Now look at this. This is where the, the beauty of that water has come into its own. Look at that. It's all that lovely juice. All we have to do, you know, add a little bit of Gravox to this if you like. Nice cheats way of making a bit of gravy. Those onions, well, of course, they are part of the garnish. You know, you've got your roasted veg, your, um, your baked sweet potato, all right, let's get those all onto here. Oh, lovely and soft and sweet. Now, what we do is we just get some scissors. Simply remove, you need to remove the, uh, the string. It's quite easy to do. Just cut it and pull. And you can see how the string has held everything on the, um, on the veal. It's kept a nice shape so it's cooked equally. Okay. Now, what I've also done is I've taken some barbecues galore, barbecue sauce, and I've just put it in a pot and I've reduced it down into a kind of a jam. And we're just gonna now dob this all over the top, like so, and that just becomes a wonderful glaze and adds that sort of final flourish of flavour. Okay, how good is that? You can do this to roast beef, you can do it to a barbecue chicken, and just to show you how wonderful that um, little temperature gauge helps you cook your veal. Look at that beautiful piece of veal. Isn't that sensational? I'm going to do one more. That is just absolutely brilliant. On we go. Now, if I had eight guests around, they would be jumping out of their socks to eat this one. Beautiful roast rib of veal.